Welcome to another exciting edition of Courtney on Health. And she has, and what's your cat's name? Simba. What? Simba is taking Simba. over the studio there in beautiful Chappie land. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, we're Courtney on Health, heard on MalcolmPresents.com, plus many shades of green.com. Plus, what's your thing, Courtney? I'm sorry, I'm still focused okay, on my yeah. Courtney, Courtney has uh, CourtneyGravities.com. CourtneyGravities.com. And right. now Simba.com. I, I have to put it, you only can hear that right. on those websites. MalcolmPresents.com, you could see our lovely faces. Or at least well, you, can see, you can see our lovely faces on the many shades of green.com as well, because you it can? is embedded into the wonderful WordPress thing. All right, oh Let, let's get roll. Let's get rolling here. Okay. We have let's, a time. We're going to have 30, 30 no, minutes. No, we, we're going to go over. We're going over today. No. <laughs> okay. Hi, hi, Courtney. Max. Hi, Courtney. Hello. Hi, Malcolm. And welcome to Courtney on Health. A Zoom cast series about how to get through these lingering COVID times with tips on nutrition and exercise given by the lovely Courtney Ravenese, registered dietitian uh, with a master of science degree in nutrition and applied physiology. Courtney is an experienced nutritional and health consultant in the New York metro area, in the US, in the globe, uh, in the universe, and will help guide you on a path to wellness and health. And, and virtue and happiness. Right. Keeps you kids and keep you healthy, strong, and happy. Right. Uh, so I'm going to do some quotes. But I, I was looking at poems. I didn't love them. So there was one about Santa Claus, but it's not the time of year. <laughs> so, yeah, you're, you're, you're a bit too late on that one. I am. So, but it was about Santa not li liking the almond milk that someone left out for him. It's kind of apropos, but we'll do it in December. Uh, cow's milk and soya milk isn't good for me. Almond milk and rice milk is okay. I really, I don't really drink alcohol either. Maybe wine, but only sometimes. And that's a quote by Robert Lewandowski, who is a premier footballer, soccer, with the Bayern Munich team. So now I can give a shout out to Ted Lasso and to Roy Kent. Of course, Roy Kent is here. He's there. He's every everywhere. I can't really say the rest of that. Uh, and here's another quote. Think what a better world it would be if we all, the whole world, had cookies and milk about three o'clock every afternoon and then laid down on our blankets for a nap. That was the late yes, the time. That was the late Congresswoman Barbara Jordan said that, and it's a great idea. And now another quote. I mean, there is no point sitting around and crying over spilt milk. Gotta move on. Simba, move on. Uh, <laughs> and that was by Ted Turner, who was the founder of CNN and uh, many, many other things. So when you cry over spilt milk, what kind of milk is it? It could be almond milk or soy or oat milk, but these are, are these really milk? Uh, they are after all plant-based and not from a cow or goat or a yak. With so many options to choose from, it becomes confusing in terms of what will give us the most health benefits. Courtney and Simba will clarify some of the confusion <laughs> about the various milk alternatives on the market. We're gonna see Simba drink some milk maybe. So, so what can- like. that, Yeah. Uh, we need to make healthier choices. And, and in the milk, there's so many different ones. So move over, cows. Plant milk has arrived. And well, well, before, before we start, I want to get rid of a myth. Milk is not good for cats. That's what I heard. Correct. Yes. In fact, it's really weird. I mean, he normally lingers. You guys know he's around when we do right. these, but um, mm -hmm. it's bizarre that he's like, he must be smelling something because I can't get rid of him today, but it's okay. Um, you don't we'll have to. Around it. I think, I think <laughs> doing a milk episode with a cat in front is, we, could, we couldn't have planned it there. Exactly. <laughs> so we can make uh, him a we'll, major part of the show. <laughs> Absolutely, Simba is in the cast today. I'm uh, here with Simba. <laughs> because I'm here with. <laughs> because I know in stretching, every you always go back to the you know with stretching classes, they always go back. You got to be cat-like. 
Uh, right. I know. Cat, that's right. Cat cow. See, there it is. There's the connection. There so, you go. There, yes. There. So, um, we'll we'll talk. You know, regular milk. We'll talk. I mean, fortunately, no matter what kind of milk product you like, there's a wide variety from which to choose with different health benefits um, in the mix. Um, so, why don't we start? With, again, this is there are milks outside of what we're talking about. Simbalu, what are you doing? Come on, hop down, buddy. Come over here. Um, certainly a wide variety of them. Um, cow's milk um, being very popular um, in, in this country, but globally, goat's milk, and you guys may or may not be aware of this, um, it's actually the most consumed um, animal milk in, in, you know, in the world. So about 70% of the milk consumed is goat's milk. So we might not necessarily find it around here, um, but in the world, it's the most, one of the most popular milks. Yeah, uh, that's just a quick thing on that. Yeah. The, the Heifer International, which is a great organization that helps you know many, many people around the world. One thing you can contribute, which is the top thing is mm -hmm. a goat to a family. Yes. yes. So that just, emphasizes what you just said it's it's yeah. very very much important around the world yes yeah, absolutely and it's if you can find it and you do like the taste of it, remember we're very attached to the things that we like and we find tasty um but it um, is higher in protein than even cow's milk and apparently it is more digestible meaning less gi discomfort so, and apparently less, um, can cause less uh, allergy, uh, allergic reactions. So again, if you can find it and, you, and you find it and you're trying to experiment, um, but I thought that was an interesting sidebar about the most popular milk that's out there. Yeah, Even with Cindy, things, Courtney, yeah. my birthday is in March. You want a cow? I can take a goat. Yeah, backyard. Go. I will accept a, a cow as a, a birthday a, present. A cow or a goat? No, a goat, excuse me. Okay. Go, go can can take care of your lawn. Also. I, 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 I'll get rid of my cow. You know. <laughs> so speaking, have a... speaking of cows, um, <laughs> so cow's milk, different type. Obviously, there's full fat, low fat, um, different varieties. Um, when you look at the nutritional profile of cow's milk, um, there's a reason why it's a very popular um, product, high in protein, naturally high in calcium. Um, vitamin D is added to it, and we won't necessarily focus on, um, you know, the history of why vitamin D has been added to uh, milk products. But suffice to say, it's a reason why all of these alternative milk products have followed suit, and now we fortify um, most of these beverages with vitamin D. Um, so protein quality, um, you know, again, calcium, magnesium, uh, potassium, many reasons why um, milk, cow's milk is a good choice for many people who eat animal products. So there is a newer product. Have you guys heard about A2 milk? Not me. Oh. Um, so there's uh, regular milk. For people who are lactose intolerant, you may have probably have heard of that. They mm -hmm. choose something like a lactate. There are other brands. I mean, there's, there's, there are many different lactose-free products out there now. Um, so A2 milk is not lactose-free necessarily, but the research seems to suggest that it is a little bit more digestible, meaning less GI discomfort than um, perhaps uh, regular cow's milk or um, even um, you know, lactose-free milk. So look for it for as an option in, in a nutshell. Basically what it is, is that most cow milk that we get and most cows are considered um, as a type of protein um, in, in the milk, A1 milk. Um, and it's a combination of A1 and A2. A2 milk is almost entirely A2, which makes it more digestible. It is a different breed of cow. Um, so if you don't like the flavor of, let's say, lactate or lactose-free milks, because it does tend to be sweeter, um, not that be, not that be um, due to the fact that they're adding more sugar to it. Simba, don't step on that. Here. <laughs> there goes the camera. <laughs> yes. I love it. Hey, goodness. Yep, Simba goodness, just... Goodness. Uh, Simba, maybe give Simba some milk. Yeah, he needs something. If, if he, something? maybe he wants some milk. He seemed to like the silk carton a lot. Yeah. Uh, he, he was gravitating. Yeah, remember, towards, remember, milk is bad for cats. You know, well, yeah, but maybe alternative A2 milk maybe could work for him. 
Uh, now, now I, I, I have a question for you. And the non-fat milk or the fat milk, when they say it's 2% fat, low fat, and 1% low fat, I hear the 2% is good and the 1% is good. Sorry. I don't think she heard I got that, you. but it's okay. Come back again. Here I'm we back. go. Did you what's have your, a question? What's your question about the milk, the milk fat? Sorry. Uh, about 2% uh, fat and 1% fat. I hear the 2% ain't no good, but the 1% is good. They're all just sort of, if you think about whole, um, whole fat milk and then a notch down all the way down to fat free. Um, so uh, I'm not going to bust somebody's horns about always having fat free milk. Um, it obviously it is the lowest in saturated fat, um, but um, you know, for some people it comes down to taste and flavor, but it really from whole milk down to fat free, or some people call it skim milk. Um, it's just taking it down to um, uh, taking away more saturated fat from the milk product. Everything else remains remains the same. The, the, the uh, 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 non-fat milk tastes like water. Right, so that's what I'm saying. Like if people yeah. don't like the flavor of it, they might not necessarily like it. I will say that back to the flavor, uh, so lactose-free uh, milk, to many people tastes sweeter, not because they've added sugar to it, but because when you add the enzyme to lactate-free milk um, to break apart the lactose, it cleaves it's sort of a, uh, the, the sugar is in into two. So the mouth tastes something that's sweeter, even though there isn't more sugar in it. So if you find that not palatable and you're looking for an alternative that might offer less GI discomfort, enter A2 milk. It's going to be a little bit more money, um, but I, I think it's an alternative if you um, can't have regular cow's milk and don't like the flavor of um, lactose-free milk, just as an option. Um, so wide variety of different plant-based um, milk alternatives out there, soy milk, oat milk, um, coconut milk, pea protein milk um, is relatively newer. Um, we spoke a little bit about potato milk trending in 2022. I actually could not find it in the grocery stores. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be available um, sooner versus later. Each of these milks um, ranges in terms of flavor, nutritional profile, and in particular, protein content. So you guys have heard me talk about um, soy milk being probably the closest, to, closest in terms of nutritional value to cow's milk. Um, and that really is driven by how much protein is in it. Um, so protein gram for protein, protein gram, soy milk in terms of your alternative milk product is going to be one of your better options. Next in line is going to be pea protein milk. Now I will tell, have you guys ever tried pea protein milk? Not me. What, what, do you know what, how they manufacture? I mean, what do they do? What's the process? Do they pick the, the almonds or the, the coconut, whatever? I mean, how, and they just mash it or condense it and then whatever comes out of that, like a giant press is, is exactly. the milk. Exactly. Exactly. So if you, I don't know how they can use the term milk, actual milk, but right. well, well, what, what does milk well, mean? that's what's kind of under um, sort of evaluation right now. So dairy farmers are sort of fighting for their claim to that word milk. So you might see, uh, you'll see sort of milk beverage, milk alternative. There, sometimes you won't see the word milk in there at all. Um, but I think most people are not confused by the they, if they buy oat milk, I think they know they're not getting cow's milk, but um, nonetheless, look for the sort of the product first. So whether it be soy or almond or coconut um, or oat, and that's going to be the derivative. But you're exactly right, Maxine, that's how it's done, which is why, um, the, like when you look at, for example, almond milk, um, which in terms of calories is your best bet because it's the lowest calorie option among the plant-based milks. Unfortunately, it's also the lowest in protein right there with coconut milk. So again, depending on what your palate says, allergies, budget, um, you, it may drive your decision, at least within the category of all of the plant-based milks that are out there or milk alternatives that are out there. So almonds, um, are exact, you, you mash it up, you mix in a lot of water in there, you pull out all of the solids, 
And what is remaining is the milk derived from that particular product. So what you don't get in almond milk naturally would be the wonderful things like the fiber content, um, um, like um, you know, some of the minerals and vitamins because it's been pulled back. Milk alternatives have caught on to consumers cry for, look, I wanna choose more plant-based options, but they're inferior nutritionally. So what you will see now more often than you did, I'd say even like just a few years ago, is the fortification, meaning things have been added to these plant-based products to make them more nutritionally close to either goat milk or cow's milk or even soy milk. So you'll see that on the nutrition label that compounds have been added in there. Vitamins, minerals, for example, like vitamin D, like calcium, um, like phosphorus, um, that will be added in there. So that's a good thing because it makes it a, at least from a nutrition perspective, um, much better options than what they were even a few years ago. Um, How so. about the environmental impact of some of these? Um, I mean, especially almonds, because we know what's going on, primarily in California where they're grown, you know, they're, they're getting hit up with, with very bad, you know, conditions, weather conditions and very dry, you know, arid and, and the almonds are taking up a lot of that. Right. So what, what's your take on that? Yeah, right. almonds take a lot of, uh, being in California, almonds take a lot of water to grow. And right. They're uh, and actually that's the largest crop in in California, and they're trying to see if they could do something else because right. of the water shortage. So, um, so if anybody who buys either whole almonds or slivered almonds or even almond milk, you probably have noticed the price increase that's there. So that's cost aside, but mm -hmm. from an environmental perspective, yes, almond milk has been in a bit of a um, poor spotlight because of. Um, okay, how is it really sustainable if it's consuming that much water? I will say a lot of these companies get it. They respond to consumer um, reaction. People are very sensitive about wanting to be more sustainable, which is why people try some of these because they hear that, you know, dare, listen, dairy cows lose a lot of water, a lot of land mass. So they're hearing that. So if you go to a product that ends up not being more of a sustainable option, it becomes a bit uh, of, of, a, of, a, of a barrier. Most of these companies are trying to tweak their processes to indeed be align themselves with more sustainable practices. So I can't speak directly to what they are doing right now. Um, although that would be a great topic to really, including the dairy industry. Um, I know everybody, you know, is like, you know, anti, you know, from a sustainable sustainability perspective, you know, it's, it's horrible, it's horrible, but they too are trying. Um, it might not be perfect, but they're trying to make efforts to make it um, a more environmentally conscious decision to choose their products. Um, so it's a little bit of a stay tuned. Um, and where is it coming from? So I, it's not one of these packages that I have here, but I was researching this and I looked at um, the, uh, actually it was the country of origin from where one of the plant-based milks came from. And it was coming from Spain. So I had to ask myself, so it might be using less, you know, you have to factor all of these things in, right? So yeah, they might be using less fill in the blank, whatever product it is, but it has to be transported from Spain to other parts of the world and here. So sometimes um, if you're able to choosing more local products, um, for example, and, and I'm in the Northeast, so this is local to me, but Chobani, including their oat based um, uh, um, mil uh, milk alternatives, is in upstate New York. Um, so, you know, their regular milk, um, this, um, it's not Chobani milk, but it's Mountainside Farms. It's from Catskills, um, upstate New York and Cat in the Catskill region. So a lot of it is local. So for some people, that's really important because they wanna choose more local product when they can and when feasible. Um, how, how about hemp milk? As, as you're talking hold about- on, Hold on, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just curious about hemp milk because that could really be local. No. <laughs> but, 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 but no, seriously, what about hemp milk? Because I've not really heard about that. Um, it may be used for other products, but um, yeah, you can, uh, hemp milk is definitely available. It's, uh, it might not be as widely available in let's say 
regular grocery stores. And when I mean regular, I mean bigger chain grocery stores, but your local health food store is absolutely going to have it. I will say it's in line nutritionally, um, if that's important to you, with more of, at this point, the almond and the coconut milk. And what I mean by that is relatively low in calories, um, but from a nutrition perspective, there's zero protein in there. And at this point, they're not necessarily fortifying back those vitamins and minerals that put it on par with some of the other plant-based beverages that are out there, like soy, for example. Um, but certainly if you like the flavor of it, um, it's great, it's available. Um, I will say from a cost perspective, you really go, you know, you might have to scratch a little bit more to find where you can get these products for a little bit more reasonable price. So for example, I know that pea protein milk um, is a little on the pricier side. Uh, I know that oat milk um, is going to be on the pricier side. And I don't know if you guys can see this in there, but the cartons are smaller. So they might be charging you the same as regular milk, but you're getting less product. So make sure you're looking at, you know, that, you know, if you're comparing, let's just say all in the plant-based category, go for flavor, go for cost, but make sure you're getting the same amount of product for the price that you're paying. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's the two, two things on that. Number one, packaging is deceiving mm -hmm. because it might look smaller, but the content might be, they might fill it up more. The, the larger containers might have more room, more space. I don't know. Cause I know they do with that with uh, the, the, the candies, like the potato chips, you buy mm -hmm. a bag of potato chips and 50% of it is air. Right. And, and that's a volume. And that's why it if you've ever noticed it, that's what it says on there, but these are fluid ounces. So it really, I think it would be great if they use less packaging, because again, in terms of a movement in the right direction environmentally, that would be great. Um, but in this case, it is a, it's literally a fewer fluid ounces of product that you're getting, but you're not wrong, Malcolm, that happens a lot. The bag may look huge. Thing is, you know, you know, you're talking yeah. about the other milk I've been getting and what you're saying that so far the regular milk from cows or the and, and goats might be the most nutritious milk if you can take the uh, the lactate but as far as uh, as far as being healthiest the regular milk is healthiest um it is that's why i'm saying so but i i get it i think people have the, the good news is like i said lots of choices out there but for some people cow's milk even goat milk um, is not an option because they do, they choose not to have um, an animal-based product, and that's certainly their choice. Nutritionally, you're right. It's it's at the top of the list, um, next followed by soy. But now that more of these products are being fortified, meaning they're adding in B12, they're adding in calcium, they're adding in D, yeah. it really does align itself, with the exception of protein, with the cow's milk, goat's milk, um, and the soy milk that we, that we mentioned before. So that's definitely something. And while you're bringing that up, Malcolm, it's really important, um, particularly for um, uh, parents out there with small kids, choosing, let's, so if you wanna go completely plant-based milk, and certainly that's a choice to make, absolutely fine. But it's very important that you make sure that they're getting um, the vitamins and minerals and protein that would normally have been found in a product that kids, you know, in, in cow's based milk. So choose those with that in mind so that your child is consuming a product that really contributes to bone health, which is so important at really young ages. And as we've spoken about before, as um, uh, kids move into their, you know, tween adolescence and even early college and you know, early adulthood. It's really important to make sure those needs are being, um, being met. Okay, so, it's yeah, talking about kids. How about mother's milk, breast milk? What, what does that contain that uh, 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 the other products don't? Um, well, there's it's the reason why if, if you've looked at or followed or you have grandkids or kids, um, if you've looked at sort of formula production over the last decade. There's a reason why they've added um, essentially fatty acids like DHA to the formula because it's natural, it's in mother's milk uh, at varying different levels. 
um, the type of nutrition profile, again, what we're not going to split hairs about high milk versus when the full milk comes in, um, but it's very digestible. So it really speaks to the digestibility of it, which is why usually not the breastfed babies don't have GI discomfort, but they tend to have less. Um, so it really is the perfect food that comes from nature that so rarely occurs. Um, but, and I won't even go there, topic for a different, you know, different week, but there are some people who, you know, bottle it for a, a consumption past um, infancy and, and toddlerhood. But um, I don't think we have a great uh, drive of demand. I know, I know, oh. but no judgment oh. here. I, I'm not gonna crazy. judge, that's a, I think I, I read that one somewhere and I, I was shaking my head, but. I, I don't know if it's a myth or not, but they said that I think it was Rockefeller or one of the you know old time millionaires used to have breast milk delivered to him every day. Oh. Yeah, well, you know, to, to each their own, right? So, uh, yeah. but, but but if if someone can, would that could could would would that be good milk for an adult? No, and the reason be, it's not even great. Listen, I'm a I'm a huge fan of nursing and breastfeeding, huge. Um, but beyond a certain point, for a variety of reasons, your your babies and adults need a different variety of food, which is why vitamin D, which which continually depletes in breast milk, um, you know, over the, you know, several months past six months, you need to supplement a baby with that. And then of course, once they start to eat, which is where that milk product comes in, which is why I sort of I made that comment before about making sure your children are getting, you know, the calcium protein D that they need. So it's, it is a perfect food for babies, but at some point it wanes off and then Kit, for a variety of reasons, babies need to eat different foods and, you know, mouthfeel and texture and, um, and a variety of things, but lots of different options. I would even say the one thing to look for, um, and this is really any milk, but particularly among the plant-based, you want to look at what's in the ingredients, make sure that you're not buying ones that are sweetened. So the vanilla flavor, the chocolate flavor, um, these add only sugar, little nutritional value to them. So you want to make sure that you're not choosing those, particularly as an adult. If you're having a hard time getting your kiddo to have any kind of either milk product or milk, milk alternative product, and they're like, I'm not having any of it unless it's chocolate, like chocolate mm -hmm. milk or chocolate. Um, and the choice is either chocolate, let's just say chocolate soy milk or um, like juice, plain juice, apple juice, or even Gatorade or something like that. I think the choice is clear for most people. You go with the chocolate flavored soy milk. It's not, it shouldn't be your first choice, but if it's a choice between a product that brings all those other um, vitamins and minerals and protein to the picture, you, you, you cave when it comes to that. You gotta be reasonable. Um, so um, again, just, just a caution because a lot of people buy the vanilla based um, plant-based uh, beverage and they're pulling down a more calories than they think they are. Right. So, Cause uh, the taste, because you have to, it's an acquired taste, you know, at first when you drink soy milk, you know, you go, what, what is, you know, what is this? Or, uh, I mean, I would, I had, I, I would use almond milk for a while, but, um, I went back to just like 1% milk. Uh, I don't, I eat more yogurt than I do drink milk, but I do right. like to have milk in my coffee, not the, the skim milk and coffee just does not, yeah. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't do anything for me. Like why? Uh, yeah. But, but there's, there's so much, there's so many options now. So to well, understand, if you, if you, you know, if you have good coffee, you can have it without milk. I use coffee black because I like the taste of the coffee. Yeah. I have really good coffee, trust me, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> I, um, and sometimes I drink it black, but, but, you know, I'm kind of, uh, a Brit at heart. So uh, milk and uh, tea and coffee, I, I got to have a little milk. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Maxine. I tend to have more of the cultured like um, yogurt. And so uh, we pretty much use, although I will tell you that I've tried the A2 uh, and um, it's, it tastes the same to me. 
Um, but but generally we're either having the one percent or the or the two percent here. But like I said, my point was there are lots of options out there depending on your budget, depending on your palate, depending on your preferences. Um, also a thing to look at in addition to the ingredient list. And for some people, this is really important and it just speaks to um, your preferences and being aware of what's in your food. Some people have an issue with now almost all of the plant-based milks, by the way, are going to have some type of gum in it. Um, so carrageenan, um, guar, um, gallon. Um, so the, it's just across the boards. They're going to be right. in there. It's, look at those labels. If it's important for you to not have carrageenan in there, which by the way, is, it's generally regarded as safe, but for some people, it's just not an option for them. They prefer not to have it. Just make sure you're choosing a product that doesn't have that in it. And it has one of these other gums in it um, that um, are considered approved ingredients for organic um, foods um, and beverages. Just something to look for. Yeah, guys, I, I, I hate to be a killjoy, but uh, as usual, our time is out. Oh our time is out. Well, I think the, that uh, good information has been given and uh, well, I learned a few things myself. So yay yeah, for me. I'm, I'm still, <laughs> basically, I, I can't think, uh, unless you, uh, as far as you know, like the lactate that you might be allergic to, or bad for the GI tract. Uh, depend what type of milk you drink. As long as it's been fortified, it's a matter of taste. Yes, exactly. And well, and budget. You know me. I'm always throwing in budget because right. right. there's right. no question that the plant-based milks are going to be more expensive. No question. Um, yes. So, um, and but you're absolutely right. There are a lot of different choices, but look and see what's in there. And as long as they're fortified, well, and 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 also. If, if you're just having a little bit of it, and I know we're out of time, Malcolm, then I would say the protein issue is less of a concern. But if this is your go-to beverage, and this was my point, hello again, Simba. Um, this was my point about if you've got children and you're trying to get them to have two to three cups of a milk or milk-based option in there, the protein does make a difference. So I would suggest you consider some of the products like either soy um, or like the pea protein milk um, that have you know seven, eight, nine grams of protein per serving versus zero or one gram or two grams like some of the other products that are out there. It's just something to consider. Okay, Max, okay. Tie, tie us up, wrap pretty, us up, wrap up the show. Cool. I'm, I'm glad that uh, Simba moved. <laughs> uh, so thanks for joining us for Courtney on Health. Uh, to get more info, follow Courtney on her Facebook page, which is Courtney on Health, on Instagram at CLG Wellness, and visit her website, CourtneyGravities.com. For more shows, go to MalcolmPresents.com and TheManyShadesOfGreen.com. Uh, this has been Courtney on Health, Smart Sound Nutrition, Strong Safe Fitness, and we'll catch you again next time. And, and, and a, a commercial word, uh, MalcolmPresents.com is an internet platform uh, that has uh, several, that has about uh, 10 podcasts or Zoom casts. So, and then we have all the back shows also. So if you want to see Courtney on health and see and other shows pertaining to physical activity or uh, <laughs> uh, health things, go to, go to Courtney on Malcolm and go to all the back shows. I think we've been on about a year, right? A little over a year. It has been a year. Yeah, we need to have an anniversary party. A lot okay. of yeah, we'll have an anniversary party. We'll have some pea pod milk and uh, <laughs> we'll have Simba. I'll bring Sp my see Sparkles has just been laying on the bed this entire time. So <laughs> she, 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 anyway, she, guys. All right. Have a good we'll see week. See you next week. See you next week. I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye bye.